Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all of our sins. We pray, Father, for every everyone in our Bible study tonight. We pray that we will see, not only with our eyes, hear with just our physical ears, but we'll see it in our hearts, yes, and we'll grasp it, and the Holy Spirit will do a work on us. Yes, Lord. Lord, I bless you, and I thank you for thank you. all of these. I pray for Mindy Guy, Lord, that she will be burying her husband. God, I pray for comfort for her and children and all the family, Lord. Lift them, help them, encourage them. Be with Jim tonight as he's recuperating from heart surgery. May he have a speedy recovery. And I pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Of course, we're teaching on, it's good to see Missy. She had foot surgery. She's in the back of her foot propped up. We're just glad to see her. Amen. Put your hand together. Let her know her in the house. Uh, I need help. I've got people coming in, but they're not receiving the notes. So somebody, got to please give these notes out if you would. If you, if you don't have the notes, raise your hand, please. And they'll, they'll, they'll get them to you real quick. Just keep your hand up. If you see we're getting short, please run a few copies off. Uh, we're going to look at the fruits of, of, of the Spirit in Galatians, the fifth chapter, in just a matter of minutes. You've got to realize, next week we're going to talk about the gifts. You've got to realize there's a difference between the gifts of the Spirit and the fruits of the Spirit. Gifts are given to you instantly. You have them. Fruits in development. You don't, you don't plant and reap the same day. Amen? Uh -huh. And when the Holy Spirit does developing the fruits of the Spirit in your life, it takes a process. It takes time. Uh, you know, when you're planting, you've got to get the rocks out. You've got to plow the soil. You've got to get things ready. So, fruits and gifts are two different things. Amen? There are a lot of ministers, there are a lot of people who are very greatly gifted of the Holy Spirit. Gifted of the Holy Spirit. But their integrity and their character doesn't match up. Are you with me? The gifts are for ministry. The, the fruit, that's for your character. That's your integrity part. And you've got to have both of them. Amen? Uh, you've got to have both of them. You've got to have integrity. I'd rather have a man or a woman with integrity and maybe not a whole lot of gifts as somebody with a lot of gifts and no integrity. But I like both. <laughs> Let's look. Galatians, 5th chapter, verse 22. Are you there? But the fruit of the Spirit is. Will you notice something that I just read? Look at the word like you've never seen it before. Do you see fruits or do you see fruit? Isn't that amazing? Is fruit singular or plural? Singular. You've already learned something. Because we normally say fruits of the Spirit, but the Word says fruit of the Spirit. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Is love, everybody say love. Joy, say joy. Peace, say peace. Long suffering. <laughs> Kindness. Goodness. Faithfulness. Gentleness. Self-control. Now watch what it says at the end. Look what it says at the end. Against such there is no law. Law's Old Covenant. Law's Old Testament. Isn't that amazing? Against the, when you develop the fruit of the Spirit in your life, you, you, are, you are led, guided, and directed by the Holy Spirit. And you're, you're, remember that grace, when you're under grace, that you're no longer under the law. And the law does nothing but point out your sin. And when you have these, when you have these lovely fruit developed in your life, wow, you're having a time. Look at your notes. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is the result of the Holy Spirit working in our lives as we yield to His will. So the fruit of the, of the Holy Spirit is the result of the Holy Spirit working in our lives as we yield. Remember, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He does not force anything on us. He does not make us do anything. We have a free will. We can choose 
to do right or to do wrong. He that knows to do good and does it not, to him it is sin. So you got to realize that when we yield to the Holy Spirit, how do you yield? He tells you to do something. And you do it. That's yielding to the Holy Spirit. There's no use for me to tell you that the fruit of the Spirit is developed by the Holy Spirit without me also telling you you've got to yield to the Holy Spirit. You've got to, you've got to do what he, what he asks you to do. And that's His will. We are saved by grace through faith, through the blood of Jesus, but you're not saved to set. You're saved to obey God, to do His will. Amen? Uh, some of you were here the last time I spoke, and uh, Mindy and Jerry Guy were in the building. They came to visit that day. As a matter of fact, they sat up here beside my wife and I. Uh, that time we had pews in here. And at the end of that service, I made this statement, because the Holy Spirit had spoke to me. And this is what I said. It was a good crowd here that morning. As a matter of fact, it was about 150, I think. I said, at the end of that service, I said, There's, the Holy Spirit told me there's someone here in this building close to death. And when I went to visit uh, Sunday afternoon, my wife and I went to visit, I had forgotten all about it. Mindy reminded me what I said that day. Now, as I was saying that, there were older people here. Your daddy was here. And, and no, and, 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 and I'll be honest with you. Uh, I, in my mind, I thought it was someone older. I had no idea, but I knew, I knew, I knew, because the Lord spoke to me that night before, and he spoke to me that morning the same thing. Someone here is close to death, and, and there was. He's, he's gone. When the Holy Spirit speaks, he knows what he's talking about. Remember, the Holy, Spirit, the Holy Spirit is not to make us weird. He's to make us a good, effective witness of Jesus Christ. Uh, look at number two. There, there, are, there are nine fruit of the Spirit. Nine. If you count them, you had them listed there, you'll find nine of them. And we, we talked about that earlier in our class. Some of you may not have been here. There are not only nine fruit of the Spirit, there's also nine gifts of the Spirit. And uh, as we talked about early on, the Holy Spirit uh, has many symbols or types. One of them is a dove. The dove has nine main feathers on one wing. The dove has nine on the other wing. The dove representing the Holy Spirit, you have the nine gift, the nine fruit, and the back of the of the dove, it's, it has a tail feathers. The main, there's five of them. I believe that's for the, for the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. They bring balance, to bring balance to the, to, to the church. So it's very, very important. How many, how many fr fruit? Nine. Nine. Stay with me on that. Number three, love is the foundation for the production of all of the other fruit in your life. E everything flows out of love. None of, the, none of the other eight fruit of the Spirit, none of them will be able to be developed in our lives unless it flows out of love. A lot of people want to have all kinds of gifts. They want to be able to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. They, they want to be able to prophesy to people. But, but they do not want the Holy Spirit to do a work in them, to develop them, to be a loving person. Uh, I've told you before, I'm always concerned when I see people ministering to people and they're, they're, they're rough. Jesus wasn't rough. The only people he was rough with were Pharisees and Sadducees. But he wasn't rough to people. He was very gentle with people. And if you're... If you're ministering for Jesus, you want to minister like he does. Uh, there was one minister, uh, uh, I don't know, three, four, five years ago that had uh, revival meetings down in Florida, and, and, and he was hitting people. Uh, instead of laying hand, he was hitting them. And, uh, 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 and people were just going wild over that. You, you better have some discernment. You better have the discernment. Is this, is this God or is this, what is going on here? And I'm not saying that was of the devil. Well, I'll tell you what it was a lot of the time, flesh. 
flesh, flesh, trying to impress people. Love doesn't try to impress people. Love just loves people. Amen? So, love is the foundation for all the other fruit of the Spirit. You can never, look at number four, you can never really love until you have received or accepted God's love in the person of Jesus. You can never really love. Now, let, let, let's look at it. I, I love my car. I, I love my house. I, I, I love my... The, I love, I lo we, we, we use that word so, so much. I love this, and I, I love my new dress, and I love my new shoes, and I love, and I love, and I love. And then two weeks later, you've fallen out of love with your shoes or whatever. We, we, we're, we're not talking about just feelings, okay? We're talking about the deep love of God. For God so loved the world, world, sinners, He first loved us, that He did what? Gave. So we know love does something. What does love do? Gives. Love gives. It just gives. Love gives. People, people when, when you're getting ready to get married, they're, they're talking about, oh, I love her and she loves me. You know? but, but guess what? They're not in the, the giving business. They're, they're, they're saying, now, whatever you can do for me, I'll keep loving you because five years, two days, two days. Two days. I, my, my biggest record was I had a couple that, got, that I married they, they, they lasted about eight weeks, and I broke that recently. I don't, I don't like to do weddings. I don't like to do weddings. I, I, I don't like to do weddings because the people don't keep their commitments. They don't keep their commitments. Love is giving. Giving of yourself. Now listen to me. Love is also commitment. You, you're not loving somebody unless you're committed. Because if anybody here has been married very long, you know that feelings come and feelings go. I want to tell you, when you get older, one thing, let me listen to it. When you get older, one thing you want, and that's a good night's sleep. Can I get a witness anywhere in this house? Anyway, when I was young, I didn't worry about that. I was in college. <laughs> You, you get a little older, you're just thrilled that you've got a good night's sleep. Matter of fact, when you, in, the, in the morning, if you're married, the first thing I said, she asked me, did you get a good night's sleep? I asked her, did you, oh, help me somebody. I went to my 50th reunion the other day. Went to my 50th reunion last Friday night. Went, no, Saturday night. Went to the 50th reunion, and it's amazing. It's amazing how old them people are. But, but one, thing, one thing that really was something, as you, as you went from table to table talking to them, guess what they talked about? What did they talk about? Their sicknesses. Their surgeries. <laughs> oh, people, we love to talk. I'm going to show you my scar. <laughs> God have mercy. Oh, Number five, love. This word for love is agape. It's agape. That's, that's God's love. There are three Greek words for love. Agape is the highest form of love. It's God's love. Philo is the Greek word. It is friendship love. Friendship love. You're my friend. But, the, but the, 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 the Bible always translates all three of those as love. The last form of love is uh, eros love. That's sexual love, physical love. So there's three Greek words for the word love. The highest of those is agape love. And that's the word that we see in Galatians, the fifth chapter, verse number 22, we see agape love. The word for love, agape, doesn't refer, number five, it does not refer to warm feelings. Doesn't Because God loved us when we were yet what? Sinners. He didn't have warm feelings. We were, we were disobeying God. We were, in, we were in sin. God hates sin. Did you hear me? The Bible says that God hates sin, any form, any fashion. God doesn't wink at sin. If you sin, confess it and turn from it. I've lost my amens. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> 
So love doesn't refer to warm feelings, but to a deliberate attitude of goodwill and devotion to others. If you want to find out what love is, read 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, tells us what love is. And if you, if you look at how love is described in 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, you'll find out that the most of the people that say they love something doesn't deal with 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. I love you as long as you please me. People have come to me and said, well, I've fallen out of love. Well, we're not, we're not talking about, you know, stepping into something and you fall out of it. Amen. You don't fall in and out of love. You fall in and out of feelings, but not love. And read 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, and you'll, you'll find out that love does not keep a score of wrongs, but we do. Because, well, I, for, I had a lady tell me one time, she said, well, I forgave him, but I'll tell you one thing, I'll never forget. Wow. Man, if I was wearing a cross, I'd have pulled it out. <laughs> Fangs were showing. You know and I know that's not, that's not forgiveness. That's not forgiveness. Matter of fact, what she's saying is, as soon as we get into another thing and he does something I don't like, I'll bring it back up. Aren't you glad God doesn't bring it back up? I said, aren't you glad that he casts it into the sea of forgetfulness? Wow. My, 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 my. Are those chairs comfortable? Praise God. God, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed. Look at number six. Love gives freely. Love gives freely. Without looking at whether the other person deserves it. And it gives without expecting anything back. It, now you know that's hard. Because once someone gives you something, you feel obligated to do what? Give them something. And back and forth. Back and forth. But love gives freely without expecting anything in return. Listen to it's raining. Isn't that nice? Don't go to sleep on me, please. <laughs> Missy's allowed to. She's on medication. <laughs> and after, after the teaching, we're going to all lay hands on Kevin because he needs prayer. <laughs> Uh, look at the next one, joy. Everybody say joy. Mm, 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 mm. Look at Nehemiah 8.10. It'll be on the screen. Nehemiah 8.10. Look at the very, very last part of it. Look at the very last part of it. For the joy of the Lord is your what? Strength. Strength. Why do you believe there's... <laughs> why is there such weakness in, in the average ordinary church? 4,000 churches close up shop every year. Every year. 1,700 ministers, pastors... 1,700 pastors quit the ministry every month. I can't comprehend that. I can't, I can't comprehend that. I want to tell you something. By, by, plead the blood of Jesus. God being my helper, I can't imagine not doing what God tells you to do. If He calls you to do it, you do it. Now, some of those ministers never were called. I believe with all my heart. But many of them were, and they're just beat up and battered and banged on. But churches are closing up shop because, let me tell you something, people come to church, I'm not talking about emotionalism, I'm not talking about extremism, but they come to church to see some joy. When there's more joy in Joe's Bar and Grill than there is in church, tell your neighbor, he's preaching the truth to us. Joy, unlike happiness, is good. Joy unlike happiness. Happiness is when you get something that made you happy. Unlike happiness, joy is gladness and delight that is completely independent of good or bad things that are happening to us. And see, what happens is, I'm happy one day because good things are happening, you know, and we can sing, God is good. Mm -mm. But the next day, we have something bad happen, and, and, and we feel discouraged, despondent, down in the dumps, well, let me tell you, God's joy is not up and down with your feelings. Uh, look, if you would, at 1 Peter 1, verse number 8. 1 Peter 1, 8. Whom having not seen, you love, in whom though now you see him, not yet believing, you rejoice with joy 
unspeakable, that means it's beyond explanation, and it's full of what? Glory. You believe on Jesus and you haven't seen him. Some say, well, I had a vision of him. You haven't seen him yet. We believe on him, yet we haven't seen him. Jesus told Thomas after he, he saw the nail prints, he said, you believe because you see. But Jesus said, blessed are those who believe and yet have not what? Seen. Because we believe by faith. It doesn't take faith when you see something. When you get to heaven, you won't need faith. You won't need faith. Because you'll, you'll, be, you'll be seeing everything. Wow. And when we believe by faith, by God's help, by God's help, by believing, you have joy. You need to, you need to tell the enemy when he's fighting you, trying to discourage you, I've got joy. And my joy is unspeakable. It's full of glory. Oh, my, my, my. Well, I don't feel like that, Brother Rod. I, just, I, I can't say something I really don't feel. Well, here's your pacifier. You just go ahead. And we're going to put some K-Ro syrup on it so you can suck on it there and get feeling really good. I know I got in trouble for doing that. So, <laughs> but, but joy is our strength. The gladness of our salvation is our strength. Because I'm saved... I'm, 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 I, I'm glad about that. I, I'm forgiven. You're, you, you and I, life is brief. It's brief. It's so quick. It's like a fog that appears in the morning and gone by mid-afternoon. You ought to be thrilled that God gave you another day. Now, I know in this room, in this class, and those watching by internet, I know there are people who've had Tremendous tragedies happen in their life. But that's a part of life. Your tragedy is not someone else's tragedy, but everybody has tragedies. Everybody here. How many of you still have your dad and mom alive? Get your hands as high as you can get them. Now look at that. Do you realize, just look, do you realize that the majority here, dad and mom, are not alive? Wow. How many of you, both your parents are dead? More in this room who do not have. Wow. How many of you are glad that you have a heavenly father? <laughs> mm -hmm. Glory to God. So when the devil's trying to beat you down, say, I'm glad I have a heavenly father. And this is a hard, this is a hard thing for, at least for me, it's hard for me to call my God daddy. But yet the the New Testament tells us that we've been adopted and we can call him Abba. Abba. That's the word for daddy. Isn't that amazing? Th to think that we, the Jews were so fearful of God that they wouldn't pronounce his name and if they wrote it, they would leave out the O. But yet, in the New Testament, because of our elder brother Jesus, we've been adopted into the family of God and we can call God our daddy. Oh, I don't know about you, but that makes me happy. That makes me happy. Oh, glory to God. I've been adopted. I'm glad I've been adopted. And I have the same legal rights as anyone in the New Testament. Anybody. I have the same legal rights. Because we're joint heirs with Jesus. And if you're a joint heir, listen to me. If you are a joint heir, don't know if you know much about inheritance. But if you're a joint heir, you have equal shares. Our grandchildren, they bid to see who's number one. They do. Birthday time, they, they, I think Matthew texted us about 6 a.m. that we should have a birthday because he knew if he was first, he'd get brownie points. <laughs> and Mary Elizabeth, our, our oldest grandchild, she, she put up, Beautiful, beautiful thing on Facebook. I don't know if any of you read it. It was a beautiful thing about her pop on her mama starting the Maranatha Fellowship. It was, it was, I remember back when I read it, I started crying. You know, and she, I'm guarantee you when we, when, next time we had to get together for, for Sunday dinner, she, she, she'll be saying, I, I'm, I'm number one on her. <laughs> <laughs> because, let me tell you why. Because this is what they do. This is what they do. They, they, they battle for number one because they believe they're going to get a bigger inheritance. 
<laughs> I have a 91 Corvette, and one of them, I believe, has put their name on it somewhere. <laughs> They've claimed it <laughs> by God's grace. But we all have equal shares. That ought to make you happy. Tell your neighbor, you ought to be happy. Oh, you ought to be happy. Number nine, peace. Oh, my. Number eight. I, I skipped number eight on my count here. What, what, let me have your notes real quick. I'll get it for you. My notes, I, I skipped number eight. Oh, that, that, that's joy. Number eight is joy. Number nine. Yeah. I, I, I went. Oh, I, I see. Joy, unlike happiness, gladness. It's gladness and delight. And then Nehemiah went. Joy denotes. I don't have it in my notes. I don't know what it denotes. What does it denote? Everybody <laughs> find out. I don't have it in my notes. I left it out in my notes. Given by God's Spirit, I just seem to show up. Oh, that, that, that joy denotes, uh, but the last part of it, during hard times. It shows up. It shows up. Joy shows up best when it is displayed in hard times. Boy, I tell you, some, some, some people really, whoo. Number nine, peace is not the absence of turmoil, but peace is the presence of tranquility even while we're in a place of chaos. Huh? Come on. Peace is not the absence of turmoil. People think, oh, well, I've had a peaceful day. had not been any battles. Hadn't been... No, no, no. Peace is not the absence of turmoil. It's not the absence of a battle. Peace is the presence of tranquility even while we're in a place of chaos. Has anybody here experienced that? Come on now, I'm telling you, in the midst of it, a supernatural peace comes down. See, we think peace is when two parties have signed an agreement, we're not going to fight anymore. But the devil's not going to stop fighting until he's cast into the lake of fire. So, so you've got, you got a wrong concept if you think it's when you don't have any more battles. You may be in the biggest battle of your life, but God gives you peace. He gives you peace. He gives you tranquility. Peace of mind. Uh, Romans 5.1. Let's look at Romans 5.1. Therefore being justified by what? Faith. Justified. Just as though you have not sinned. See, some people think I'm justified by my church membership. <laughs> you don't get justified by that. There's going to be people go to hell who, who are members of a church. You've got to be what? Born again. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have what? Peace. Why do you have peace? Because you've been justified by faith. Why, why would you have peace? Well, number one, yeah, you, 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 your, your sins are forgiven. You're on your way to heaven. If you died right now, you'd be in heaven. Well, you, the, the peace of God flows out of the fact you're forgiven. There's nothing better than being forgiven. And, and again, you have to believe that by faith because the devil fights you and tells you you're not, you're not saved. Oh, you're not saved. If you were saved, you'd be much, much better than you are. Oh, my goodness. You're, well, you're not as good as that person over there. The devil works on us two different ways. He tells, tells these people, you're not saved. And then he tells the one that's just religious, you're special. You are special. And these people in this church don't appreciate you. And on and on and on. Those are both what? Lies. He's the father of lies. He lies to people. But peace is because I know I'm forgiven. Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace. When you pillow your head tonight, if you're, if you're saved, if you're forgiven by faith, you have peace. Anybody know that little children's prayer? That little children's prayer that, that, that people teach their children? Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Stop right there. Now I'm telling you, here's a little five-year-old learn the prayer, and you're talking about that child dying. But, oh my. <laughs> and then, come on now, listen to that prayer we pray. Teach a little child, and if I should die before I wake, oh my Lord, they go into, they go into spasms. You, you tell a little four-year-old they're going to die before they wake up. Change that prayer. 
Now, for us older ones, amen. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to repent. He will too. Because you've been justified by faith. That gives you peace. Amen. Number 10. Peace is a sense of wholeness and completeness that is content that is content knowing that God controls the events of every day. Every day. You say, well, Brother Wright, something bad happened. It didn't shock God. He knew what was coming. Matter of fact, if you're, if you're sensitive enough to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, if you've been tuned in, see right now there are voices out here. There are voices out here. And all you have to do is have a receiver that can tune in to those voices. There are not only voices out here, but there's pictures. Anybody here? Now you say that a hundred years ago and they would think you're the weirdest dude in the world. But you can get a receiver up here. See, see some of you never grew up except with cable. Does anybody remember when you had a, a rabbit's ear on top? <laughs> <laughs> and then finally they put an antenna on top. When they put an antenna on top of my house, I was thrilled to death because I no longer was the remote control in our family. I was the remote control. We only had three channels, and I, and I would change them. My dad said, get up, and I'd get up, and I'd change them. Not only did I change them, I had to hold the... Now, I'm, all of you know that if you had those rabbit ears, if you put aluminum foil on it, that helped too. Amen? But there were pictures that you could draw out of the air with a receiver... Put on a TV. And hard to believe they were all black and white. <laughs> and they all were grainy. <laughs> but the same with voices. There are multiple voices. You, get, you have the right receiver, you can pick them up. We are receiver. And, and, and you're either picking up the voice of the enemy, or you're picking up the voice of the Holy Spirit. I tell you, He can talk. The Holy Spirit can talk to you. All you got to do is listen. We think prayer is, is us talking to God all the time. We give Him our shopping list and we're out of there. No, stay there for a moment. Read the Word. Listen. Meditate on the Word. Listen. He'll talk to you. He'll tell you what to do. He'll tell you what to do. And it's not a coincidence. It's a kingdom connection. Have you ever been somewhere and you meet somebody, you were thinking about them, that, that, that maybe they're just, they're just entering your mind and all of a sudden you meet them? Isn't that amazing? And say, oh, what a coincidence. No, 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 no. Kingdom connection. Kingdom connection. Oh, God is good. God is good. God controls the events of the day. Number 11, patience. How many of you really feel you have patience? Get, get them up high. I want to see the hands. Good, 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 good. That's awesome. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Oh, you're in for some wonderful experiences. Steve Lloyd had, had difficulty with anger. And he went to the altar one day and, and prayed at the altar. Steve Lloyd prayed at the altar and he told me he had victory. He had victory over anger. I just was so thrilled. The next time I saw him, he said the next day he was traveling down the interstate and he had a flat tar and he pulled over and he opened up the trunk and the jack was gone. Is anybody here? So he has the hood up and the jack is gone. And then he said an 18-wheeler went by and there, were, there was a pothole, West Virginia pothole. You probably don't ever see any of them. But there's a West Virginia pothole full of mud. And when that, that tire hit that, it, it put a projectile of dirty water all the way over and pow, hit Steve. Now Steve said he passed the test with the no jack. He said, but when the muddy water hit him... <laughs> Can I get a witness in the house? Because when you say you have patience, get ready, get ready, get ready. <laughs> and I'm not talking about T.D. Jakes. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Oh, my. Patience is the ability to endure ill treatment without murmuring 
or complaining. Patience is the ability to endure ill treatment without murmuring or complaining. And the Bible says do all things without murmuring and complaining. Romans 5, 3. Not only so, but we glory in tribulation. Oh, God have mercy. How many of you need help in that first part of that scripture? I'm not even going to look at you. I just got my hand up. We glory in tribulation. Knowing that tribulation worketh or develops what? Patience. I've had people, I say, how many of you want patience? They all raise their hands. And I say, oh, you should never raise your hand. <laughs> because if you want patience, you're getting ready to go through some tribulation. Because patience comes out of tribulation. Because patience is the ability to endure ill treatment without murmuring or complaining. James 1, verse 2 through, my brethren, count it all what? Tell your neighbor, you need to learn to count. <laughs> count it all joy when you fall into different temptations, knowing, knowing, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works what? Patience. Trying, and, but let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Is that, is that, does that tell us how important patience is? It's amazing how the Lord will continually work on our patience. We blame it on the devil. If you ever see me in line anywhere, anywhere, Walmart, Kmart, if you ever see me in line, don't get behind me. No, you didn't hear me. I warned you. Because I know that I know that I know when I get up there, they'll, 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 they'll be a price check. Uh, the, 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 they'll be changing shifts. And they got to pull the money out and count all of it and switch over there and all that. Hello? I prayed the prayer over the, over the food at, at my reunion Friday, Saturday night. I prayed that they asked me, because I was probably the only preacher in the house. They asked me to pray. Of course, I put a little of the gospel in my prayer. Can I get a witness on that? I put, I put, some, I put some gospel in my prayer. <laughs> well, I'm not... I, I've been to a lot of dinners and church functions... And they had a buffet, they had a buffet, so you had to get in line, and they had the tables all spread out, and the buffet line's here. Well, my table is right here. I chose that table, knowing that I'd be the first one to the buffet. Well, after I prayed, I hustled to my table, waiting with my lovely wife and the group that was with us, all of them Christians. And the person in charge of uh, the chairman, he was the president of our senior class, he chose the table that was the furthest away to go first. And it filtered down to those people that were eating there had finished, and my table hadn't even got to the buffet line yet. Does anybody think that, yes, you are right? <laughs> My A personality kicked in, and the Lord did a wonderful work because I was able to talk to everybody that came by and see them and say hi to them and how are you doing and pray for me that I'll hold out to the end. <laughs> Let's look at 12. Kindness. Kindness. Oh, my. Kindness deals with the ability... To look, to look for ways to meet the needs of others. It's a willingness to share with other people. Do you know anybody that's that way? I know one couple that I'm telling you what, they share and share and share and share and share and share. It's Danny and Karen Spradling. That is the kindest people. Oh, Mom, they're so kind. I mean, he has a 2002 white Corvette, and, and he, he told one of our friends that was visiting, he said, you just come and get it and take it out, and you can ride. I'm going, brother. Yeah. 
For a small fee, I'll let you know. <laughs> I mean, they just give. They kept, they kept some of the ministers uh, in our ministers. They're just giving kind. They're always looking for ways to share what God's blessed them with with other people. You ever watch the program on TV, Hoarding? The, the, the always is, is, a, is a hoarding specialist with a Ph.D., you know. And, I mean, they, just, they, can't, they can't get over it. They can't get to their rooms. Uh, one thought looked and there were seven dead cats they found in this. In the, they didn't know where it was. And, 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 and the, the psychologist, psychiatrist says, and these people have a problem. Yeah, a problem. They're crazy. I could do that. <laughs> they're crazy. I mean, why? Because they're keeping. They're keeping. They're keeping. Hoarding is keeping. Keeping. That's not kind. Kindness through love gives shares that's what it's all about colossians 3 12 oh what a scripture put on this is like a garment it's like a garment put on therefore as the elect of god holy and beloved bows when he's talking about bows he's talking about that inner man bows of mercy and kindness humbleness of mind meekness and long suffering put it on put on kindness uh, Kindness is when the Holy Spirit... See, all of these are fruit of the Spirit. Kindness is when the Holy Spirit tells you, shows you someone's need and you have the ability... See, I've had people down through the years come to me and say, Brother Wright, did you know so-and-so uh, needs something? Because they wanted me to take care of the need. I said, you know, God didn't show me that. It looks like He showed you that. So if He showed you that... You must have the ability to take care of it. Hello? See, we always want to dump the responsibility over on the pastor to take care of that. And, and, and if he showed you, maybe he wants you to take care of it. And if you can't take care of it to yourself, maybe there's another little group that he's already showed that need to, and the Holy Ghost will lead you to them, and together you can get together and you, you can show kindness and take care of that need. Isn't that awesome? That's why it's called the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So he can lead you to develop, to show forth your kindness. He's not going to tell you to do something you can't do. Say, well, if I had a million dollars, I'd do such and such. Well, you don't have that, but what you do have. See, we're always talking about if we had something we don't have, we'd do something. Man, God's not dumb. He'll show us the kind of acts that we can do with what we've got now. Hello, don't be a hoarder. Don't hoard with all the stuff you've got. Don't be a hoarder. Amen? The Greek word for kindness means useful. The Greek word for kindness means useful. He wants to use us. Again, you are not saved to set. You're saved to serve. Jesus said, I did not come to be served. I came to serve. And if my master came to serve, that's what I... We are servants. Kindness also means, now this is awesome, kindness also means the absence of malice. A kind person doesn't have malice. Well, I'll tell you one thing, brother, if I could ever get a hold of them, I believe I'd just wring their neck. That's not what we do. We're not called to wring somebody's neck. Do you know that Corinthians tells us the best way to get back at those who hurt you the, the, the way to, to throw cold, hot coal, hot coal, ha ha, hot coals. Yeah, you. Do good to them. Do good to them. Pray for them, yes. Pray for those persecutions. But it says in Corinthians, do good. Do acts of kindness to them. You know why? Because when you do it, when you do something, you know, and, and when you leave, they'll be thinking, why'd they do that? What was their motive? They'll be up all night long. What they, what they, what they, what they, what they. <laughs> it's what it says. It says it'll heap hot coals of fire on them. Acts of kindness. Acts of kindness. Find somebody that, that ha, has done you wrong. And don't, don't sing the old hee-haw song. Somebody's done me wrong songs. But let the Holy Spirit tell you how you can do something to be a blessing to them. And do it without 
any malice. Amen? Vengeance will eat you up, destroy your sleep, cause ulcers. Unforgiveness will just... You, you have more physical problems than anything. A man called me up the other day. I had not seen him or heard from him for years. Years. And I knew he had talked about me. And he had talked about my children. I knew he had. And he called me up just a week ago. And he asked me to forgive him. And he, and he said, he said exactly what he did. Which I knew he did it. He said, I've talked bad about you and I've talked bad about your children. He said, I want you to forgive me. And I said, you're forgiven. Isn't it amazing? Sometimes it takes years and years and years. But if you've got anger and, and venom inside of you, oh my goodness gracious. Oh, eat you up. It'll kill you. It'll kill you. Oh, years ago. Got to. Got to. But when that person asks you, they need to hear you say, you're forgiven. And they are. You go on and love on them. Then I saw them at a funeral the other day. I went right up to them and hugged them. Yeah, God, God, he works things out. Goodness, 13. Goodness gracious. No, it's not that. It's goodness. Goodness is love in action. Romans 15, 14. Back up one, Kat. Thank you. And I myself am persuaded of you, my brethren, that you also are full, full of goodness. 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 It is doing the right thing even when we don't feel like doing it. Amen? Acts 10.38 tells us that Jesus was anointed of the Holy Ghost and He went around doing good works. Now see, we think about His healing, we think about all that, but He went around doing works of kindness. Good works. Helping people. You know, we don't have all the things that Jesus did for people. Matter of fact, John says if we had all the things He did, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't hold Him in a library. Could not hold Him in a library. So I'm telling you, He went about doing good, and we need to do good things. Even when you don't feel like doing good things. Amen? You know when you'll feel better? Do something good to somebody. Do something good. Do random acts of kindness and you'll be shocked. You'll be, you'll be shocked. There's all kinds of things you can do. Uh, Christmas time coming up, go, uh, buy, buy a gift card. Buy a gift card. Buy a gift card and, and say Walmart. Buy a gift card at Walmart during Christmas time, $25, whatever God tells you, and, and go to Kmart and walk around and look for a family. That the Holy Spirit will tell you to give it to them. And give it to them in Jesus' name. And walk away. You'll be blessed. Have any of you ever done that? Oh, I've done it. It's exciting. It's more exciting. You walk around and you find, you find one of them. You know, maybe there's three or four little kids. And you hear, you hear that that's a honey, we can't afford that. Oh, man, just walk up. See, you're representing Jesus. Just walk up and hand it to them. In Jesus' name. Merry Christmas. Don't wait around for them to ask who you are. No, 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 no. You're not doing it to get credit. You're doing it to bless them. Amen. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. Oh, may you be faithful. Faithfulness is being steadfast. Steadfast in keeping what we've been entrusted with. If God entrusts you with, with finances, you need to be faithful with those finances. Amen. If God has blessed you, with a position of authority, you need to be faithful in that position of authority. Faithfulness. It's being dedicated and dependable and worthy of trust. That's what faithful is. If, you're, if your car only works two days a week, would you call that car faithful? Hello? If your refrigerator works one day out of the week, is it a faithful refrigerator? And today in America... A, a, faithful, a, a faithful church member is someone that, that comes to that church two times a month. That's considered a regular faithful member. I would not call them that. I'd call them lazy. Get up. And, oh, I better get back over here. 
<laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Steadfast, dedicated, dependable. Knowing you'll be in your spot. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's what faith. Gentleness. Gentleness is another word for meekness. Gentleness is another word for meekness. Glory to God. Meekness, I'm going to tell you what it is. Meekness is not weakness. A lot of people say, well, he's so meek. He's like a, he's like a doormat. No, it's not, that's not what meekness is. Meekness is power or strength under control. Oh, listen to that rain. Glory to God. Oh, may the Holy Ghost rain like that. Amen? May we have in the spiritual what is going on out there in the natural. So meekness is, is power and strength under control. Jesus said if someone slaps you, he literally meant slapped you. On one cheek, turned the other. He did not say let them kill you. No, he didn't. He didn't say that, Tom. He didn't say let them kill you. I know there was a man one time that said if a robber came in his house and, and, and attacked his wife and his children... He just would have to let him do it. I said, not me. No, you've got wrong concept of meekness. Meekness is strength and power under control. You, you think I'd let you come in my, our house and, and, and attack my wife? You've got to be one crazy dude. Would you do that? Any men in the house? My Lord and my God. A man that will not take care of his family, the Bible says, is worse than an infidel. A non-believer. Now, I'm not wanting to hurt anybody. I'm not in the fighting business. I'm in the loving business. Amen? But you're not going to come in and take... Well, it's like a crazy person comes into a church and starts destroying lives, shooting, but what? You, you, you somebody get him. Amen? You don't, you don't do that. Let me tell you what. My sister-in-law emailed me Sunday and said a missionary had just got a message out in, in one of the Arab countries Iris, this terrorist Muslim group coming through, and they were, bringing, they were bringing the children of the Christians in the town out on the streets and telling these children, little children of Christian dads and moms, to deny Jesus. And the little children were not denying Jesus, and they shot them and killed them in front of their parents' face. Now, I want to tell you something. We better take care of them over there because our brothers and sisters over there, I tell you, send in, send in reinforcements. Get this thing stopped over there. Amen. I'm, I know I'm getting political. Forgive me, but it's just, it's a part of me. And I'm an evangelist, see, and I can get political. <laughs> Amen. Preach to me, brother. Right, I will. <laughs> Colossians 3.12. i got to hurry. i got two minutes. Colossians 3.12. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy bowels of mercy, mercy, kindness, humbleness, humbleness. Humbleness of mind, meekness. Put it on. Put it on all the time. 1 Timothy 6.11. 1 Timothy 6.11. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after. Follow, pursue. Pursue. Righteousness. Godliness. Faith. Love. Patience. Meekness. Follow after it. Go after it. Amen. The last two. Self-control was the very last fruit. Self-control was having command... Of one's own behavior through the power of the Holy Ghost. Self-control deals with every aspect of our lives. You need to be self-controlled. If you don't have the money, don't spend it. Self-control. The devil will say, you look wonderful in that new dress. But rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. I wish I had some men of courage in this room right now. They would amen me. Some would stand to their feet and then begin to shout. Self-control affects every area of our lives. Even the area of appetite. Even the area of everything that goes on. Reading the Word. You need to have certain habits that you're faithful to. Self-control. Self-control. Turn off the TV. Get in God's Word. Self-control. It is... It is commanding one's own behavior through the power of the Holy Ghost. Well, well, how do you do that? You say, Holy Ghost, help me. Holy Ghost, help me. I need help. 
Titus, second chapter, verse 11 through 13. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. Amen and amen. God's grace can not only save you, but through the power of the Holy Ghost, God's grace can help you to say no. Some people can't say no. You've got to be able to say no. Amen. Number 18. Self-control calls for a disciplined life of following Christ's example of obeying the leadings of the Holy Spirit. Discipline. We don't like that word discipline. How many of you were ever spanked when you were little? Oh my goodness gracious. Let me see again. How many of you were spanked? My goodness gracious. I didn't realize you all were that ornery. <laughs> spanked. Now, God disciplines, it says, chastens, chastens, that means disciplines, those that he loves. And you know as well as I do that when you have children, you have to deal with each child differently. You know, uh, some children you say, no, I told you not to do that. And, and boy, they quiver and start crying and boo-hooing. And some just stare at you. And it takes a little more firm discipline. Well, we have to be disciplined as Christians. You have to discipline your life. See, I, I know that you love to know the fact God loves you and you're special and you're precious and you're this and you're that and you're wonderful and you're just sweet and you can leave the church and go on. <sighs> but when you're, when you're committing sin and you're doing things that are not right, let me tell you what. You, you, you better shape up. You need some discipline in your life. You're wasting time. You're, you're doing things you ought not do. So you need discipline. That's self-control through the power of the Holy Ghost. Let's look one more time at Galatians 5th chapter. Stand to your feet. Put it on the screen if you would. Galatians 5, 22, 23. I want you to look at these fruit. Next week we're going to talk about the gifts. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Say love. Joy. Peace. Long-suffering. That's patience. Gentleness. Goodness. Faith. Meekness, temperance, against such, there's no law. Tell your neighbor you need all nine of them. <laughs> Join hands, let's pray. <laughs> need all nine of them. Praise God. Brother Howard, dismiss us, would you? Please pray for, for us. We'll be leaving tomorrow to go to Fort Walton, Florida to preach Friday, Saturday, Sunday in a military base there. Uh, so I appreciate that. Hey, the next class starts in 10 minutes. We love you. God bless you. See you next Tuesday. Yes, you did awesome. Who, who is the Holy Spirit? If you have your term papers here for the, those in taking the class, please bring them up.